fitness and wellness expert, naturopath, and adventure enthusiast, Wendy Peck. And my husband, Todd Isburner. He's a fundraising guru, men's mentor, and Bible scholar. And as a couple, we're going to share riveting breakthrough stories from our guests who've experienced the meaning of a changed life. Our hope is that you will be inspired, equipped, and entertained along your own life journey. So lean in, listen well. This could be your biggest breakthrough. Hey there, it's Wendy Pett and Todd my husband, is Todd Isburner. Ready for a new show? Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited about this episode uh, because let me ask you a question. Have you ever wanted to do something like to perfection? I mean, like where it just, you just know what wow, that was perfect. Yeah. Like this podcast. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, <laughs> we've, we've been doing this podcast for a, a short while and we're constantly trying to figure out how to make it better. But yeah. So here's the really cool thing. You're not even aware of this fully. I don't think. So I've talked to our guest uh, before we got on here, but today I really believe we are going to have the absolute perfect podcast. Well, I kid you not. Well, but how's that even possible? I mean, Wait, is G- are we interviewing Jesus? No, 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 no. Let's not get carried <laughs> away here. Uh, very simply, our guest, Brand Hansen, is going to be explaining to all of us how to be perfect in all things at all times. And then what will happen as a result in your life if you really, truly follow through as a perfectionist. Cool. So we're going to get like the top five tips on how to be perfect, guaranteed, you're going to have a better life. I think so. I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I think I got that right. I think that's what he's bringing to no us. No pressure for Brant. No, but the, the, the reality is um, this is the guy to teach us because uh, how do you have like, how do you write three books becoming bestsellers? How do you, how do you end up with a syndicated radio show on over 200 radio stations across the country? Uh, how do you get a millions of downloads on your podcast? And then now, let me throw this one in here too. And beyond all of that, he works on behalf of needy children around the world. Yow. And then wow. he wins multiple, we... multiple personality of the year awards. Come on. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Wait, you just said yeah. multiple personality, uh, multiple personality yeah, uh, awards. No, no, multiple yes. personality? no, no awards. Yes. <laughs> I, maybe it's a little of each. I'm not sure, but you can't do that unless you're perfect. So Brent, come on in here, get in here. Let's learn how to be perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome From to the Brand show. Hansen. Brent Hansen. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. You know yeah. what? I, I've actually what? done shows. I don't know if you ever heard this, but I actually did radio shows where I said, okay, folks, we're going to have the perfect hour. I will, <laughs> I will make no mistakes, no grammatical mistakes. There will be no vocalized pauses. It will be in. If you catch me making a mistake, then you can call the show. The show is just, but for the next hour, it's just nonstop phone calls because it's nothing but <laughs> errors. And then people trying to prove that it made a mistake. It just, it was actually a great <laughs> illustration of how you can't do it. You can't be perfect for 30 seconds if you try. <laughs> but what is, seriously, what is the deal with that? What is this, uh, what is this drive inside of us that wants us to be perfect all the time? I mean, it, uh, for well, you, what was well, it? Was, for me, the, the perfectionism really is only, was only about writing books. Like, and, and uh, I think, honestly, I think a lot of our perfectionism I, I, let me say this for me is actually born out of arrogance. Mm. And I think for me, it was thinking I was capable of writing some incredible book. And, and, the, and the result was I didn't write any books. And I think, I think that, I think not, not doing things is actually a way to protect the arrogance, mm. uh, at least for me or something like, Ego. I, yeah, because I, I thought I was capable of, writing some epic tome or something like I'm going to redo Beowulf or Lord of the Rings or something. I thought you did. (laughs) In one of these books you've written. Yes. (laughs) The truth is I can't, and uh, I'm not good enough. Um, I'm not, I'm not all of those things. And, um, but that stopped me from doing it. And you know what? I read, I read a book from Seth Godin and this was, it was kind of my breakthrough um, called Lynchpin. I don't know if you 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 have you. Okay. So he was writing and emphasizing about, how he himself he regards as a mediocre writer and but what he does is he finishes stuff Mm. that's all that's his secret so now he's you know making lots of money and he's really established and he's successful in the marketing realm and he's got all these books out but he's like none of my books are great but Mm. i'll be darned if i don't send them and he actually says unless you ship the product it's worthless Mm. 
Wow. You, you, have to, you have to press send on that article that you wanted yeah. to write or finish that great American novel that you're, you're so capable of in your head. Like um, in a shipped mediocre thing is better than a no a thing. Shipped, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a recovering perfectionist. I use that term a lot. So I feel <laughs> you. That's a stretch. Term. Yeah. So I feel you. And it keeps that procrastination thing. Uh, steady and it's frustrating. And so I'm, I'm one of your peeps. Like I get you. And this is like so refreshing that you're on because I do, I want those top five tips on how to make everything perfect. (laughs) On how to, yeah. But yeah, it's just finish and get, get it done and and not Mm. get so hung up on the the details. That really unlocked me to be bad, Mm. but at least I'll get it done. And literally what I did, you guys. So I'm in my, what in my late forties or whatever, when I did this, I'm 51 now, but um, I guess I, I said to myself, Brant, go to the coffee house there in Rockland, California. And I didn't even know what I was going to write about. Hmm. But I, after I read that Seth Godin thing, I'm like, I'm going to go to that coffee house. I'm going to sit down. I'm not, I'm going to order coffee and then I'm not getting up. I'm not going to the bathroom. I'm not reordering coffee. I'm not getting out of this chair until I write a really bad chapter about something. <laughs> it's going to be terrible. Like, but I'm going to finish it. It's going to be terrible. I know that. And I'm going to finish it though. I'm going to be done with a horrible chat. I've never written a chapter about anything in my entire life. Wow. wow. So wow. I sat down and I wrote a chapter about anger. Hmm. Cause and, you were uh, angry that you <laughs> procrastinated <laughs> so long. <laughs> yeah. And it may have been, we like, we just talked about it on the air or something. So I was just, yeah. I was thinking about it like, okay, well, and I wrote it and it wasn't very good. And, uh, I finished it and I went back the next week and I wrote chapter two and it wasn't very good. But I got it done. And I, I just was like, you know what? I'm not Tolkien. I'm not C.S. Lewis. I'm not even, I'm not Philip Yancey. I'm not Tim Keller. I'm not any of these things. But at least I finished two chapters. Hmm. Well, I sent them after encouragement from somebody. Just like, well, now you got to send it to a publisher. I did. And then it was Harper Collins, And they got back to me. And they're like, we like it. I have to tell you, I'm glad that you wrote those chapters because unoffendable Mm -hmm. is the name of the book and it blessed my socks off. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, you. I read that book twice and in the season that it came out, it was a perfect time for me to read that. And so I know that your quote unquote bad chapters have blessed many. So I'm glad that you sat down and didn't go to the bathroom. So you wrote. You you know what? And I I had a friend when I finished writing the whole thing, I had a friend look at it and the the difference between what he read and then when the final edited version was miles apart. I mean, having an editor is wonderful too. And at this point, having given up on my perfectionism, having a good editor for anything you do in life is brilliant. Sure. Yeah. And so they went, they went through there and made 50,000 changes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like extraneous words or, you know, this story is bad. Or, Doesn't know, he realize we have to put a period at the end of a sentence? And oh, <laughs> did he never learn about commas? Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I get that. I get. Yeah. So yeah. Hey, let me ask you this though, um, because I find it really interesting that it was only in this particular area of life that you procrastinated because you were afraid it wouldn't be perfect. When that it, when it comes to writing a book, what about all these other things that you've done? Though? Have you just not cared enough? <laughs> how could you <laughs> how could you go cruising through things and not want it to be just right? Well, I th- I think radio has been really good for me. Live radio because you you learn you have to do it again. It's like it makes you ship. It makes you mm. do it. Like I can't get that back. I have to do this. The song is ending in thirty seconds. The pressure. And- yeah. For somebody who otherwise would procrastinate, like I don't get to. So it's actually a really wonderful field for me because every day I've got to, I've got to prep, I've got to deliver. Mm-hmm. I don't have a choice. So for somebody who's naturally a procrastinator when it comes to communicative, you know, arenas, radio is the most like, you don't have a choice. You're doing it. You're going to press yeah. ship. If it's mediocre, so what? I mean, you're going to, or bad, even you're going to, I'll, I'll be walking home or driving home and going, wow. That was not good, but I got to do it again tomorrow. And um, <laughs> that's very healthy yeah. for somebody. If you do tend to think now other areas, I know I'm bad at stuff, so I don't worry about it. But when you grow up and your, your gifts are in writing, or for instance, you start to think, oh, okay, I'm really good at this or something. And then that's what can stop you from actually doing the stuff. Mm. Cause it's not going to be just perfect. Right. Yeah. 
So you've been married almost 30 years and you have two grown children. And I'm just curious how the perfectionism part plays out mm-hmm. in your relationship with them. Well, or does I, it? It, 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 it has it in my relationship with them. I, it's interesting to watch it with kids though. When you've got kids, yeah, in their own arenas, my son in particular is, is a Titanic intellectual. Like he really is. He's, got his deficits like we all do, but then he's also got his pluses and his pluses are crazy off the charts. I keep trying to tell him it's okay. Like if you fail, it's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Right. Really? It doesn't matter. Dude, let's laugh. Cause he's so far on the end of the spectrum where it's, and he's literally on the autism spectrum too, but he's so far on the, on the, I got to do this right determination spectrum that he needs to be pulled back to no, let's relax, man. Cause he's such a great guy, mm. uh, but he's so gifted. I mean, he's, he's doing his interviews with, I think he's going to interview with Yale med school next week or next month. That's fantastic. Like, he's going to be a neurosurgeon. He's just won multiple wow. medals. We'll right have here. him on the show next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you go get him? Is he around right now? <laughs> Two degrees from Berkeley in Russian literature and linguistics. <laughs> and then being an Intel officer, extremely successful captain in the air force. And uh, Wow. Okay, so you're probably up. you're probably the best thing for him because he gets to look at your life and realize, yeah, there's nothing really perfect about my dad, but like he's <laughs> yeah, but he's a quote success and he's loving life. So. And, and right? to be like, no, we need to goof off here. Like, um, it's okay, and let's laugh. Everything's kind of funny at some level. So it, it, it is interesting to see that in your kids or in other people because again, yes, you're gifted in this area, but that's not who you are. Mm. Yes. Wow. Say yeah. that again. Say that again. Cause I mean, people got to really hone in on that. Well, okay. Just because you're gifted in an area, that's not who you are Yeah. because that, that is what happens too naturally. I think for human beings is we tend to gravitate towards where our ego is stroked. Mm. That happens really early on in life. So then you become like, if you're, it's a, uh, it can be a problem. It's funny too, because people who grow up, like my, I use my brother's example. Cause he's, he's, he was the most good looking guy, like in the history of, of like elementary school and high school and all the girls just went crazy over him. But oh, yeah. he would say, I think even, in, even at the college and he was a three sport athlete in college and all that, even at that point, he would say that that actually became his thing mm. and maybe held him back from some other stuff. Mm. Um, but it could be your- a lot. That's really yeah. key. It, it's true. If you are really good at something, you start to misplace your real identity mm-hmm. and you think that identity of, of what you do is who you are. Mm-hmm. And, and it, I, th- I think it's especially tough for men and especially as they age and, and you're going to experience this too. You will have a point in life where you need to let go completely of that thing that you did so well and continue to let surface to the top who you really are, because that's all that really matters, right? It's who you are and how people react and relate with you, the who you are. You're not that much far ahead of me on the age curve, you're a little bit, but um, <laughs> I know I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I could probably listen to you talk about that for a long time. Um, and I, and I do relate to that and, and I do, I do want it to come down to me and God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And out of that, the rest of my relationships, you know, my marriage, even everything flows out of that. But at some point I'm naked before God and I don't have any, whatever resume yeah. started this, founded that. That's how we all yeah. need to be yeah. just really just bare bones and just naked before God, because I, I do believe it's not just a, a male issue. I think females mm. get wrapped up into that, yeah. who we are, even as being a mom, right? Like we're a mom or we're a wife or, or you know, whatever, mm. or our career, but it can just take mm. over. And it's like, wait, no, I am yeah. a daughter of the most high or, you know, it, it it's just, it's, um, it's a two-sided coin. I'm thinking about my, I'm thinking about my 94 year old mom who still, her whole identity is still being a mom, uh, which is, which is precious in a lot of ways, but she also has a very close relationship with Jesus. Well, that, 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 you know, good things like being a mom, C.S. Lewis pointed this out too, and this is, it can be misconstrued and then people hate you for saying it, but he's like, even patriotism or being a mom or whatever can become this idol can be, Mm -hmm. because it's whatever your identity is really is rooted in that you'd be crushed if you lost it. Yeah. Like you couldn't so yeah. uh, not, not grief stricken is understandable. Grief, there's a time for that. But I mean, like you're, everything is gone Yeah. versus being unshakable because ultimately my foundation is yeah. 
God loves me. Yeah. Man, that so, is, that is so dead center true to the core of our being, but you weren't always like that. So just let's back up a little bit. Let's go back to the early days of Brand Hansen and, and that relationship that was formulating with God. Tell us how that came about. Well, I was, uh, I was raised in a pastor's house and my dad has allowed me to talk about this. He's, he's still alive and um, we're close, I think, you know, back and forth every day on texting and whatnot. Um, but there was a lot of drama going on in that house. Like uh, it was scary. And so it was very fundamental, very Bible oriented you know, revivals and Sunday morning, Sunday evening, Wednesday night. Uh, and at the same time, I was scared in my own house growing up and my folks got divorced when I was in middle school and we were in a small town and uh, then they got divorced. They got remarried after a while hmm. over my concerns. I was actually the ring bearer in the next wedding. I think I was a freshman in high school and I didn't, my mom just wanted to make it work. She just wanted a family, you know, so I don't, I don't blame her in the least. And but you, you didn't have much hope for it. No, I didn't want to go back to that environment. I wanted peace. I didn't want to worry about Dysfunction. everybody's life. Mm -hmm. And uh, then they got divorced again after that. And we, we moved around a lot. So I'm, an, I'm very skeptical about um, Showtime Christianity. And because I just, I'm, you know, you see enough where people are like, oh, what an amazing man. Oh, what an amazing, like you. Yeah. We have no idea, even to this day, like that guy that everybody's impressed with on Instagram or on a, like you get no clue, mm. no idea. Behind and, closed doors. Yeah. So to make, make people out to be like, oh, they're so like, we had no idea. So and first -hand very, experience, first hand experience you growing up, you, you saw one thing that didn't line up with what you heard. My entire life. Uh -uh. So honestly, I am so, I tell people this, I'm so skeptical, so burned that it chased me back around to Jesus because he's the only one that makes any sense. Actually, I can read what he says and what he does for us. It seems to jibe with human nature being so flawed mm. and so hypocritical by nature, like self-righteous by nature. Like this is, Jesus is so different from everybody else. Um, so that actually chased me back around to him because he seems to be the only one that acknowledges the problem and then does something about it. I honestly don't know, but the, I don't think the alternatives are very good. So that's why I'm a huge Jesus guy. That's so <laughs> good, Brent. That's so good to hear. Was was that, uh, that's a process that started to, to, to occur over a period of time, like at about what age or stage in your life? All the way. I was extremely skeptical my entire life, wondering what's true, what's not. And so it's been a, it's been a, a progressing thing. I think though, what happens is, and this is a little bit difficult to maybe explain, but you can get, you start with, you know, the singing the little simple songs, little scripture songs in church as a kid. I remember one that was like that, surely goodness and mercy will follow me. And that's from Psalm 23. And then you go through all of these struggles and all of these doubts and all of these, what if, but what about that? And what about these other, what, these debates about these other issues? And what about this is this important, you know, comment. And then I'm at the point now in my life where I'm just walking down the street going, surely goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's the perfect antidote right there. I'm back. I'm back. You're back. Just back. give me a simple, peaceful song. Beautiful. Yes, Beautiful. Because because he's my shepherd, I lack nothing. Yeah. It says in Psalm twenty three, and then it ends with that. But it's like uh, when people encounter that sort of childishness or childlikeness, I'd prefer they might think, "Oh, you're just naive. You don't know about all these other things." Like, no, I do know about those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think I think you can swim through that sea and wind up mm -hmm. on the other side, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a good place to be. I think. I think sometimes it's harder for people to have that. Uh, naive nature and to be simple about it. They want to be uh, more complex and there's got to be this big answer. And you no, know, it's really just simply we'll Jesus, perfect you know, in our understanding. Per well, right. Perfect, perfect, perfect in the understanding. Perfect. Yeah. So did you actually um, fall away from, from the Lord at all? I mean, you said you went full circle, but you were just kind of skeptical. I didn't do any like awesome, cool, crazy, like, uh, I don't know. You're strung yeah. out on drugs or anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't. Um, 
But you did eat a loaf of bread almost every day, <laughs> which is a little bit toast, like toast. A, like a drug. <laughs> that is a little bit like a drug. Uh, <laughs> it was coffee, but no, I I didn't know where else to go. I literally there were times where I'm like I was I'm I'm open to exploring, but I don't I'm, I don't that doesn't make sense to me. Mm. Yeah, where did you Je- don't add up? Where did Jesus fit in uh, at that point a few years ago? where you wanted to write a book and apparently you'd wanted to write a book for a while, but you didn't get there uh, because of your quote perfectionism. So what, what happened? I mean, the Seth Godin thing was great, but where were you at with Jesus at the time that you made that decision to go ahead and abandon your perfectionism and start writing? I think where I was is roughly where I am now, which is hmm. God help me be a mercy to people. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, literally that's, so every day before the show, that's what I ask for. Like, I don't have much in my toolkit. I really don't. I have words. But words are important. Words are a big deal. I, I can't fix anything. I don't, uh, I'm not a great athlete. I've got, you know, neurological problems uh, on and on. I'm, I'm not a guy's guy. I can't hunt or fish. Um, all that. But you look like Iron Man. But I look like Iron Man. So besides, <laughs> that's good. Okay. So I look at them and then words, those two things is what I, and, what I and words assets. have huge healing power. Yes, they really do. Those are huge assets. Take you anywhere you so want to go. But that's what I ask God, like, please. Okay. So this is what I got. So please help me use that. You know, perfect. that's all I got. Did you say perfect? So, he says sorry. perfect. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, um, I mean, perfectionism really is a, uh, it's an issue for a lot of people. And I suppose we could sit here and pontificate till the cows come home on this, but there is actually a definition of perfectionism and it is, uh, it's a combination of excessively high personal standards and overly critical self evaluations. And one of the things that you mentioned that keeps us from, from going forward in that area of wanting to be perfect is we will just procrastinate so that we don't have to encounter the very thing that we're afraid we won't be perfect in. Yeah. And one of the things that um, we came to understand too for this uh, interview is that perfectionism is actually considered a mental illness (laughs) of some Mm, sorts. mm, So mm -hmm. um, the rise of perfectionism is especially troubling because it has been linked to a uh, many mental health issues. Uh, A meta analysis of 284 studies found that high levels of perfectionism were correlated with depression, anxiety, eating disorders, uh, deliberate self-harm and oppressive, uh, excuse me, obsessive compulsive behavior. So OCD, which all that makes complete sense, right? Like if it's not perfect, then you, you want, you don't don't have the control and then you get angry, you get depressed. I mean, all of it, right? It's just a spiral. The control is the correlation there, yeah. like of all those things. Like, mm. I think that's right. I think I think it's it, it is a disorder if it stops you from living life the way you should. Yeah, it yeah, should be getting done. And I think throwing away the idea that I can hit perfect, like let me just get this done and hit send. Let me just get the room clean. At least I'll be done. Yeah. But the idea that I can control every possible thing here, yeah, like uh, that's you're not going to wind up not doing it and driving yourself crazy. Oh, yeah, that's just it. And also, you know, we did notice in the studies that perfectionists actually are more successful too, because like Seth Godin, you, other perfectionists, they get it done. They finish, even though they have the procrastination thing about them, a lot of them will still get it done. And those are the most successful in society. So well, they have a higher I, rate of positive emotion and motivation. So go I figure. see what you're saying. I think a, a, a recovered perfectionist gets stuff done. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, exactly it's right. It's someone who doesn't worry anymore about it having to be perfect. And I, which is, I love the, the, the way in which you got going and the, the stuff that you shared about Seth Godin, because I think that is the word for all of us. You got something you want to do. Stop thinking it's got to be perfect. Just get it done. Right. Nike says it. Just do it. Right. Was, Just do it. Yeah. Was it Chesterton? You said if it's worth doing, it's worth doing poorly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know that, just do it. Again, we have this we have this thing about excellence and whatnot. I don't want to. I'm not say don't be excellent or whatever. But like, yeah. The, the point is, it's worth doing. Do it. Yeah. Well, I we're going to put you on the spot about something because some people I just know I just feel this is what they're saying. Okay, all right. Okay, that's all well and good. But what about what Jesus said? He finishes up the Sermon on the Mount. He puts a little tie on it and he puts a bow on it and it goes like this in Matthew five. You ready for this? 48. Be ye perfect, even as your 
Heavenly Father is perfect. What do we do with that? Mm -hmm. What do we do with that, Brent? Well, language is a weird thing. And uh, I, I noticed you defaulted to the King James, which I don't <laughs> um, That's right. We like, the, we be like ye. that. Be ye. There's, there's, that sounds there's more authoritative. Of, I, I'm not an expert on this. I'm not an expert on languages and whatnot. Uh, but um, we all know there's a sense in which perfect doesn't mean without mm. any flaw mm. ever. Mm. Like, oh, he's perfect for the job. Yeah. We hired that guy. He's perfect right. for it. Yeah. Oh, so he'll never make a mistake. He's perfect. No, no, no. It's not. I mean, it's, it's the tool that fits the. It's the key that fits the lock. It's like mm. this is perfect for that. This tool, this screwdriver, this Phillips head mm. is perfect for this Phillips head screw. That's a good like, analogy. There's that about it. So there's there's also just in terms of completion. Mm. So Jesus is wrapping up this whole talk where he's announcing the kingdom, and he's saying like, "Be fit this, fit this kingdom. Like this is the way God's kingdom works." Um, and actually, mm. that whole sermon is great news for people. The last thing it is, it's taking down barriers. It's not putting up any, it's going, blessed are these people, blessed are those people, not because they're superior, but because God's kingdom is so awesome that here's the new rules. So fit this. Yeah. I don't know. That's so good to be complete and whole. Right? Yeah. That is absolutely the real definition of that word that's used in the New Testament in the Greek translation of that really oh. is the, the Greek meaning. I just looked that up this morning because I was thinking, yeah, what exactly did that really mean? Uh, yeah. And I think there's a lot of misunderstanding around that, but that that term is used to bring things to its completion. It actually referred originally to machinery and all the parts needed to make the machine function properly. Damn, and good. That, that's, isn't that's that, and you nailed it. So divine download right there to I Brant. Mean, it's so cool because, <laughs> awesome. because as we move closer and closer in our relationship with Jesus, we become more and more complete. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the perfectionism thing really starts to fall away because it's like it just doesn't matter so much anymore what people think of how I Dude, do what it, so you hard. want me to do. Can I, can I add one more thought on that? Yes. Because yeah, yeah. I've been learning about this just in the last couple of weeks. Um, and that is the idea of what God is looking for from us in the Old Testament. That's the word has said, which is used in different contexts. Mm -hmm. From God, it's this steadfast love. It's this unchanging love. It's the way it's interpreted. But has said means this loyalty, mm -hmm. like a covenant loyalty, like a believing loyalty. Like it's one thing to believe. Everybody can believe there's a God. I think they do, actually. Um, but it's the loyalty that makes the difference. Mm -hmm. I mean, the demons believe, but they're in rebellion. They're not loyal. They're disloyal. Right. So... That's what God's looking for from me. If I went into my relationship with God with a perfectionist mindset, I'm going to be miserable. Mm. Mm. Miserable. Mm. But he's not looking for us in, in that sense. He's looking for loyalty. So that means when I sin or I get caught up in something or whatever, instead of hiding in shame because of my perfectionism and avoiding God, I can go right back to him because, look, I'm still loyal. I am right back here. I'm coming back every day. Yeah. I, and as a man, too, I think loyalty is something we can understand mm -hmm. in a strong way. Like, I'm kind of all about that. Like, I, I love loyalty. Mm -hmm. So even though I sin, I'm coming back. Yeah. I'm going to keep coming back until I'm dead. And then I won't have to worry about it. But it's like that to me is a, an antidote to a perfectionistic mindset when it comes to God that so many of us are caught up in, I think. yeah. And that's one of the characteristics of God. Mm -hmm. Loyal, you know? Right. Yeah. So, like it's all, it's and we're created crazy. in his image. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So he's looking for the covenant relationship with yep. us. Yep. And then we sign on to it. Mm -hmm. You know, we drink from the cup and say, and we say, I'm in. And uh, he's looking for that kind of loyalty from us. Yeah. And Love that. Yeah. that Hebrew word again, one more time. I said it's H E S E D. I know, but say it, it more, say it more like, you know, they would have said it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Said. Very good. Hey, uh, that's a little quirky, I know, but then we're talking to a man who's king of quirks. Oh, <laughs> quirk, quirk, quirk we dumb. love your quirkiness. He's you king you of make quirk, us laugh. King of quirkdom. So, do you mind just sharing a little bit with the audience uh, some of the things? Not some people would say, "Oh, he's got handicaps." You've had a couple of things in your life that you have uh, contended with that you didn't necessarily ask for, but I just think it's 
incredible the way you use those things in your life that are a little different. Yeah, it's made me different. And I think that's been a blessing. Ultimately, I wouldn't change it, but it's hard. If you, if I was talking to any kid and I do, I talk to kids, they're 12, 14 year old guys, especially yeah. sometimes older, sometimes a little younger. They're, yeah. they're identified as being on the autism spectrum, which I am diagnosed. Um, I tell them I would not change it. Mm. I wouldn't go back to middle school though. Yeah. Mm. I would not do that or high school. Any Were of you that. bullied? Um, at all? Yes and no. A little bit, but I think God had mercy on me. I was always on the outs. Don't get me wrong. But in terms of being like beaten up every day or something, that was didn't happen. And part of that was I developed this incredibly quick verbal defense mechanism. Mm which is paying off for me now. So all I do is ad lib, right? There you so, go. Nothing yeah. is wasted, yeah. man. No, Nothing. I, I, I'm thankful for, but that became my thing. Nobody wanted to be made fun of and cut to ribbons in front of everybody. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's a, that's a good skill, but it develops something. Mm. The other thing is I have this thing called nystagmus. So my eyes shake back and forth and my head moves back and forth when I have to read something or, or yeah. try to play a sport. It's very obvious. Um, you know, when I first, if I can just interject, when yeah. I first met you many years ago, uh, you were that little, uh, uh, that little newscaster type guy who was trying to yeah. get a show at, at, out in some little town in the middle of Illinois. Yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we, came, we came out to kind of help you guys out with some fundraising, but so I wasn't quite sure. I, I wasn't sure when your head was going back and forth, if you just didn't like me and you were ready to disagree with everything I said. Or maybe he <laughs> lived in India for a while. Because well, no. they do. They, they nod their head a lot. And when I went oh to India and came goodness. back, I started I, doing that. I can't believe you're doing that. Well, I'm just well, saying. Right. <laughs> well, I, that brings like in Romania, apparently they invert the yes, no nodding sequence. There you go. I'm like I'm going to move there and be <laughs> positive. <laughs> welcoming that's hilarious <laughs> that's always been an issue todd always and that's on my mind a lot i can't i i'm i hate no i don't i don't hate meeting people i am very aware that i'm constantly sending that message to people it's not welcoming plus mm -hmm. i look intense anyway as a normal thing i have to tell myself <laughs> to smile make eye contact um so that is i've always been at a social disadvantage to this day when i meet people and I don't know how, I, I still don't totally know how to handle it. But again, I think it chased me into radio. Like radio is a perfect medium for me. You can't see me, but I still get to have some influence on you. Yeah. But the that? first time I met you, I mean, there was, I thought you were very warm and friendly. And okay. I mean, I didn't think you were weird. <laughs> like you're of, saying, A lot of radio Todd. announcers are actors too, honey. You got to <laughs> know. I mean, he's <laughs> well, part of it is uh, learning like, yeah. how to do it. Probably also you were probably around where Todd was around or whatever. And he's quirky. So we're all quirky yeah. and we just don't know that uh, the difference. Sure. Right. Quirky? Oh, I think quirky is a little bit of a stretch. Oh, yeah. oh uh, you know, he uh, is. <laughs> so that all, all of that, I would go back and say, thank you, Lord. Um, he uses this stuff. He, re he, he redeems things. He takes mm -hmm. your story. And there's a lot of things I think in anybody's life that you would go, that was awful. And thank you, Lord. Yeah. Mm. To have so, that attitude is huge. That's that's a gift to have that attitude. Well, and Brant, what I've what I've always loved about you is, uh, and I was teasing you earlier. I mean, you're so comfortable being you uh, because you know that you can't be who you think you maybe should be or could be or want to be. It's like put all that out the window. This is who I am, that's and great. I, that's and true. it's. And it's not like you have learned, okay, I'm going to be an overcomer on these things. Uh, the reality is you have overcome by simply accepting and thanking God for them and then being constantly aware that this is the way it is. I, it is so refreshing, especially for those who are listening right now. They got things that they feel like, how am I ever going to overcome this? But you're worried about, hey, maybe you just need to be thankful first and let God take it from there. And I'll underscore this too, like whatever I've got that I could put on a, a, you know, we could all list our best things that we've accomplished or whatever, whatever I have on my list. Like I actually didn't plan that stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't plan yeah. this. Yeah. And so all that to say, why wouldn't I be grateful? Like I didn't, this isn't because I knew what I was doing and I had this big plan, like everything, I couldn't have scripted it better. I'm so thankful. I can't believe I get to do what I get to do with, with cure, so with writing stuff. I, yeah. I just, 
as long as that continues, I'm, I'm very thankful and I don't, yeah. So, well, God knew he can trust, he could trust you with that gift and that he would get the glory. I so. hope so. That is mm-hmm. my, that is my mission too. And that's the great thing about not planning stuff and that stuff happens anyway. Cause then you, you do have to give him the glory for it because he, everybody knows he must've done that. Cause <laughs> Brand couldn't have done that. I can't organize my sock right. or let alone figure oh. out how to get them on 200 stations or something. I got no <laughs> idea. Oh That's man, awesome. let's let's talk just a little bit about uh you've written three books now. Uh and the uh the first one on offendable like Wendy, I I read it too, and it really the, it just cuts to the chase. You use real plain, simple English that speaks truth and it's very, very relatable. So I just want to encourage people. I mean, if you're dealing with any issues, relationship issues Mm -hmm. and who doesn't deal with relationship issues, you literally can become unoffendable. That's not just a cool title for a book. That's a reality. And I love the way you sort of dig it out in the book. So that, that was book number one, um, that you just decided, I'm just going to write a bad chapter and start sending Mm -hmm. it. So what happened after that going into the second book? Um, well, I decided to write, I, I, it went well enough that the publisher wanted to do some more. So I wrote about kind of my experience growing up a little bit and being a, an analytical Christian, somebody who's not particularly emotional about my faith, like, like some people can be, which is wonderful. Uh, but there are a lot of us who don't, you know, they're not moved by giant worship services or whatever. It's just, and they see other people and they kind of wonder, well, what, what am I missing? Like, Mm-hmm. Or people can say, I feel God's presence in this place. And I'm kind of like, well, yeah, but that's because we turn on all the lights and we got the fog machines on. And we got so I, I know it's me. Like, but there's a lot uh, of people like me. Yeah. And I wanted to come alongside other people and go, hey, you know what? What God is looking for us isn't emotion per se. Mm-hmm. He wants loyalty. He wants obedience. Mm-hmm. We can do that whether I feel like he's around or not. In fact, he's glorified if I do it just for him and I don't get anything in res- like I don't get anything out of it, that that's nice. love, man. If you do yeah. it and you don't feel it, like my wife does things for me and she's not feeling in love with me at the time, but she still will make me some scrambled eggs. That's love. Yeah. Unconditional. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's no payoff for her. There's no rush of, of, mm. Oh yes. I feel so in love. Right. Yeah. And so I was trying to tell people to explain that to people. Yeah. Um, the third book is called The Truth About Us. And um, wait, wait a minute, just go back for a second. Did we say the yeah. title of the oh, second the, book? Oh, misfits. Blessed are the misfits. Yeah, yeah. yeah blessed are the misfits. Cool. And um, the the third one is called The Truth About Us, and it's about how so, like cognitive psychologists now, secular ones, will say we are so self deluded about our righteousness. It's it's chronic. Mm. It's mm. it's human's biggest problem. We can't even make good decisions because we are so convinced that we are good. No matter what we do, we will make up a story in our minds that it was justified. Mm. I'm rational. You know, all these other people are wrong. And so I just find that interesting that these guys that are winning Nobel prizes are, are agreeing with Jesus of Nazareth, who's very flippant about it. Almost. He's like, you know, you guys are evildoers and you would do this. Wouldn't your father, like he just, none of you are good. And so how could it help us if we actually believed Jesus and questioned our own goodness and then made peace with the fact that God loves us anyway, and then we don't have to be so biased towards ourselves and we could start making better decisions and be more loving. So that's, that's well, said. that is a timely word, especially now in the time that we're living in. I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, I'm thinking who can buy some copies and send them to every single person <laughs> in politics, please. I know I got a book. You know, I mean, we vote, we voted you into office. We've got you know, the first requirement, read this book and live it out. Seriously. That'd be That's nice. Just, just to force us into humility. And then uh, yeah. life gets a lot more fun at that point too, when you don't have to defend every single thing that you think That's and feel. Right. And just, right. Well, speaking goodness. of fun, Brant, can you tell us one thing that maybe the listeners wouldn't know about you or maybe others that know you wouldn't know about you? Wouldn't know um, was there I, like a secret about Brandt? Yes, a secret. I like these secrets mm. about our <laughs> guests. Herbie, because every day I'm on the air and I'm spilling yeah. out everything <laughs> I got. Mr. Transparency. Yeah. Um, gosh, you guys. I well, I'll say, this. listen, I'll say one thing that I know most people don't realize that you are a very accomplished musician. Which I did not know that until you sang. And then he told me this. Well, morning. and he was a lead singer. This is kind of crazy. I don't think people realize it. Brian Hansen was he's in a band. Yeah. Back in the nineties, right? You were yeah. a lead singer for a group. What was the name of the group? 
Farewell to Julia. It was like a modern rock wow. band thing. All right, so that's something. And then he plays, go. but you didn't play this particular instrument in the band, did you? No, I picked up the accordion about. later on. Just the accordion. accordion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Puppets and the accordion, those are my side ministries. But uh, mm. yeah, I play guitar better now. When I was in the band, they just they wouldn't let me play guitar, but I, I would sing. And there's a guy who's very high up in the music industry now in Nashville who watched us back then yeah on video and uh just very well respected president of a major label and his description after watching our band was like you guys are really good but your lead singer has the <laughs> charisma, okay, has the charisma of a sponge on a stick <laughs> <laughs> sponge on a stick and so oh, i have since run into him several times now he knows me as the radio guy and, uh -huh. And we laugh and laugh and laugh. Well, you obviously weren't a perfectionist back then. You just didn't care. You and I, you just. No, you know what's weird? Is I think I was. That's what held me back from having fun on stage. Uh, I'm too busy thinking, how am I coming across? You know, how do I look? Mm. Am I mature here? Am I yeah. like, it's, I should have just, it's rock music, man. I should have just. Let it go. Put your goof, hair down. <laughs> you know, put on a chicken costume and jumped out over the stage. And it, it would have been great. But no, it was all about, oh, you know, no. how am I looking? Am mm. I. How am I perceived? Who cares? Well, that's it's what you crazy. do now. I think when you go out and speak, you'll do crazy things like put on a chicken costume and go out. <laughs> if, it, if that if that enhances the gospel, that's it's <laughs> so weird. Well, that's so good. Awesome. Oh yes. man, we're so grateful uh, just for you, Brandt, in who you are, and you really do have you have a tremendous amount of accomplishments. And I touched on a few of them at the open of the show here, uh, and I'm so glad that you're not aware of how much influence you actually do have. <laughs> I'm really thankful thank for you. that. Your head would be huge; it wouldn't fit on the screen. Yeah. So, thank you for sharing today, just for being open and honest. And I, I really, truly feel that there are many, many recovering perfectionists where you've just helped them take the next step toward an even bigger breakthrough. Good. Good. That's wonderful. I just raised my hand. Yes. Hey, Thank you, okay. Brant. <laughs> we really appreciate you. Blessings on all you're doing and uh, all the ministry side of it as well. So Thank you so much. God Thanks. bless you both. God bless you. See ya. Bye-bye. Oh, man, that, that was uh, so good. Uh, Brant is really a special guy. Isn't he? He's just really refreshing. Very refreshing, ex especially as a recovering, now recovered perfectionist. Well, there you How go. And, well, and you can relate to that. I so can. for you today as a recovered perfectionist, <laughs> notice how I never talk about me and perfectionism because... They just don't because he just doesn't talk about it. <laughs> I like just to do everything perfect. <laughs> right. All right. So seriously, what was your uh, what was your number one takeaway? No, honestly, I really felt like he he gave me permission. Not that mm. I need permission from Br yeah. from Brant, but permission just to like just be. And I mm -hmm. and I always talk about this with my clients and so forth. But to see him speak on it felt like a, a nice reflection. Mm. And it just was a confirmation. Yeah, he's a good model. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so for me, uh, when you're talking about um, uh, how you really get started on something that you procrastinate is you just decided you're going to finish. finish it. You just finish it. So, so that's just a word for you. If you have been wondering whether or not you really could or should do fill in the blank X, Y, Z, just do it. Okay. <laughs> It doesn't have to be perfect. Just get going and finish the thing. And if you need a little extra guidance, we invite you to go to BrantHanson.com yeah. and to get any of his three books. And I know he's got other information there as well that you will glean from. But yeah, fact, um, there will be information in the show notes on all that as okay, well. Okay, very yeah. good. I was going to say, you we'll might live in an area where you could hear his radio show. It lists yeah. all the radio stations. Also, we'll he, and Sherry, he and co-host Sherry do a thing called, it's a podcast, but they actually drop the P. It's called The Oddcast. <laughs> It's perfect. It's really name. great. You want to check it out. So, anyway, thanks for joining us, and we'll catch you next time on Your Biggest Breakthrough. Well, that's a wrap for today's show. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, we love spending time with you right here on Your Biggest Breakthrough podcast. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode. But until then, just head on over to yourbiggestbreakthrough.com where you'll find some free resources and information and a place where you can comment. And we would love to dialogue with you there. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.